All right, we are now live, and it oh, is another welcome. another impromptu with myself, who is Tony Sawyer, my husband. Hello out there, everybody. And my sidekick, Norman Armstrong, my spiritual Good son. Afternoon. Spiritual son. Good afternoon, everyone. And our super fan is here, Linda Langley. She's always here. Thank you, Linda, for coming in to see us. Yeah. I think she needs a, a, a special T-shirt from us. <laughs> she does. She had a T-shirt. I got to find out what she and Pearl talked about, about the T-shirts. But, you know, that's that's right. She is a, definitely our super fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, she shows up just about every time we come on almost. And she... Mm -hmm. She she loves us. We love her too. We love her too. Yes. You said you said there have been storms going on down there today. Yes. It, um, when I was coming back from taking my mom um, for surgery, uh, it was so bad that I actually had to pull on the side of the road. And I normally am able to drive through it, but this was so bad till we could not see nothing. So all mm -hmm. the cars was pulling over. So is it storming now or is it stopped? Oh, it's, it's it stopped now. Um, but we're supposed to have rain all day long and tomorrow as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like cloudy days and rainy days, but not if it rains all day because baby girl loves to go outside no matter what the weather's like. <laughs> I don't care what the weather's like. She wants to go out and play. And we have these two chairs sitting right next to the garage door the outdoor chairs and I usually go out there and sit sometimes when it's nice and when it rains they fill up with water in the bottom mm -hmm. so when it rains she's ready to go outside and the first thing she wants to do is go get the water out of those chairs mm -hmm. wants me to tip them so she could catch it and that's wow. her favorite thing to do so wow. and when there's no water in it she bites the back of the chairs mm -hmm. <laughs> So baby girl loves it no matter what the weather is. And then when she's got to go outside and do her business, she doesn't care what, what the weather's like, except when it's icy. <laughs> there have been, been times when it was icy and she would slide her way outside. And if she didn't see a patch of grass, she would hold it, wouldn't she? Mm -hmm. She'd hold it. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I can imagine that. <laughs> So when it snows, I have to put a, a, a cardboard or a rug or something across, you know, uh, on a piece of grass, on the little portion of grass, so that when it finishes, I can remove it and it'll be grass there. Mm -hmm. then, she'll, then she'll do her business there. So baby girl's funny. She's funny. <laughs> <laughs> never, had a, never had a dog like baby girl. <laughs> and, then if, and if it snows, you can't get her in the house. She loves it so much. I found out about another type of dog that's weird and she more weird than she is. It's called the Shepherd Wolf. Yeah, and there's another one. I can't remember the name of it, but this dog can actually leap and jump and climb and all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I know what dog y'all talk about. I seen a video on that dog. Yeah, you did. Yeah, isn't that something? That dog is is something, boy. I'm I'm I think that we got baby girl probably. So and the wolf, the wolf lives. Uh, wait a minute, I'm trying oh, to. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. okay. Yeah, we probably should have gotten baby girl about 20 years ago when we had a whole lot more energy. <laughs> and even though she's an older girl now, senior, she still got puppy energy, a lot of puppy energy in her. So. Mm -hmm. very, yeah. very playful. You're right. Is, is yeah. she old now? Yeah. Eleven. She turned eleven this month, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Linda, of course, she loves dogs, and she's talking about baby girl. But anyway, for today, what are you going to talk about, brother Brother Norman? Well, hey, I, I, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> you waiting on us. <laughs> well, I got something I want to read, just a little teeny bit of this, and then we can move forward. You guys can jump in. And I know Dad's got something he wants to share. He's always got something down in mm -hmm. there. You know, and he's got something in the pocket all the time. This is out of this book again by Adi Ashanti called The End of the End of Your World. End of Your World. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he is the one of the best teachers when it comes to explaining the different phases of enlightenment, what you go through, how you 
uh, what it feels like, what it, what you encounter. Uh, so he's. I often refer back to him simply because he explains and clarifies what you're actually going through. This particular um, chapter is about the the uh, traps of enlightenment, common delusions, traps, and points of fixation, which is really, really good. And one portion of it is talking about the trap of meaninglessness. Now, did you mention delusion just now? I did. Mm -hmm. Now, that's crazy because I'm I'm looking at some right now, a word that I wrote down, believe it or not, delusion. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's what I was going to talk about. This yeah. Delusion. Yeah. That's <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so this should be good for us both then. Mm -hmm. uh, and this particular part is, like I said, it's about the trap of meaninglessness. Um, make sure you can let us let us know, Linda, if you can hear and see us good. I'm, I'm assuming you can because you didn't say anything. But anyway, it reads like this. There are other traps that can come up with this process of going from an initial glimpse of awakening to abiding awakening. Again, these traps or cul-de-sacs. When he said that, I, I had this vision of, we got a bunch of cul-de-sacs in our neighborhood. So they, you go into them and there's no way to get out of them. You just have to come back out the same way you went in. These traps or cul-de-sacs aren't inherent to awakening itself. They are delusions that arise from the mind's relationship with the awakened view. I want to read one more time so we can get it. These traps or cul-de-sacs aren't inherent to wake awakening itself. They are delusions that arise from the mind's relationship with the awakened view. The awakened view is far beyond what the mind can grasp. And the mind's inherent nature is to contain everything that it sees. It is the mind that is the source of these delusions after awakening. One of the most common of these traps is a sense of meaninglessness. From our new view of reality, we are free from the egoic desire to find meaning. We see that the ego's desire to find meaning in life is actually a substitute for the perception of being life itself. The search for meaning in life is a surrogate for the knowledge that we are life. Only someone who is disconnected from life itself will seek meaning. Only someone disconnected from life will look for purpose. Now, I think that's interesting the way he put that. Yeah, that is. That is. And so... And it's funny that you said that uh, that was a, a conversation I had uh, actually last Friday. Um, of course, of what we do and, and how the, uh, the pandemic had changed everything. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, we start doing a virtual thing and we was not mm -hmm. in the order. Mm -hmm. There were other things that I wanted to get involved in. But at this stage in my life, you know how you back when you were younger, you uh, get a job just for the sake well, I need to get a job and you know, yeah. make money and pay bills and so forth. Yeah. But now at this stage in my life, if I if I had to uh, find a, a, a job or occupation or be employed, it would have to be something that's meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. I can't just go and just jump and do anything just to, for the sake of having a job. It has to be meaningful. And I had that conversation with someone on, on this past Friday um, that a lot of people are seeking for meaning in life. Mm -hmm. and, and pretty much that's where this, this particular generation is right now. Um, of course, we know that they pretty much, um, when they look for a job or, or a career, it has to be something meaningful to them. So they don't mm -hmm. just, that's why a lot of them are not, you know, working at the fast food restaurants. Like, you know, back in the day, a lot of young people would get jobs at fast food restaurants. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. they got to be something very meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I think that's, uh, I don't think that's going to go away. I think mm -hmm. that's going to probably remain. But let me just finish a little bit more of this, unless you got something you wanted to share, Pastor. Said, I'm not saying that people shouldn't look for meaning or purpose. 
These are relatively wise strategies that help people cope with life. But remember that the yearning to find the meaning of life, to find the purpose of existence, is ultimately derived from the dream state, a state in which we have no real knowledge of what we are and in which we are unconscious of our true nature. When there is a true realization, when we wake up from the dream state, we realize that to search for meaning is no longer appropriate. When we have a direct connection with life, all of a sudden the quest for meaning and purpose seems rather insignificant. It is no longer a motivator in our life. Now that's, that's the interesting thing. It's not what's motivating us any longer. Uh, so I heard someone say this, that they went to a grocery store and they, in the grocery store, there was this young man who all he did was put out produce and different odd jobs in the, in the store. But this young man had had an awakening experience to the point that he was so present that when someone encountered him, they automatically felt more joyous, more peace, more contentment. But he was satisfied with that job and did not see it as menial or, or not important. It was important because he was able to serve people in that position. That's great. So the, the purpose now has to come from us understanding that we need a position to serve. And when that's done, we find as much contentment and joy and peace as the ones who encounter us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which, which even explains even further all the, I would say, special gifts and abilities that we all have. Um, they are different in, in number mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so forth. But those, those gifts that we have is to serve yes. someone else or the masses, I'll put it that way. Now, like, for instance, I know that Linda just recently retired. We are what we would call semi-retired because we, we do what we do right here from the home. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no, no time limit. There's no, uh, I don't have to wake up at a certain time and all this stuff. I don't, I'm on my own clock. Mm -hmm. But when you retire, I remember my grandfather who worked in the factory for years, when he retired, before he retired, he was a very active man, mm -hmm. uh, had issues with out drinking alcohol and smoking, but he was still very active. But the moment he retired, it was, say, maybe a few months after he retired, he died. Mm -hmm. And that's not the only one I've ever heard that happen to. And it wasn't, it wasn't because of his sicknesses or ailments. It was because he didn't any longer have a meaning in his life. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a conversation that I have also with so many different people when they retire because it happened to my grandfather. I mean, he he worked probably into his late 70s, mm -hmm. uh, always was finding something to do all the time. Um, he was driving around um, people that needed to go on dialysis. And so when he eventually gave it up and retired, it was like two months later. Mm -hmm. He went down sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally, just mm -hmm. was was sick, and so mm -hmm. I've I've seen it a lot happen to a people. Lot. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and it's like we need that sense of purpose, mm -hmm. and, and so having the glimpse of awakening, uh, we are like he said, we're no longer motivated by trying to find it, but. It is still very needed, and it comes. It comes through your purpose. Comes through realizing that whatever you're you're doing at the moment, whatever you're wherever you're placed at the moment, there is purpose in it. Simply because the interaction with other people is your way of serving. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we all get that because we think we've got to have something really important to do mm -hmm. that we that the mind calls important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, 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 you know, again, going back to talking about, you know, this generation, I, and I, I'm in total agreement with you that I don't see, see it going away. Uh, and it's part of our, the mankind's evolution. Um, that's what I'm understanding about 
when we pass the baton to the next generation, when another generation comes yeah. into play and yeah. so forth. But that's why I, I try I try to help people, especially when I do these counseling sessions with couples. And it's always a question that comes up. And I asked that question to you guys a couple of um, broadcasts back about what would be your definition of success and so forth. And so, again, many people, especially in, in our society, it is measured greatly by how much money you have or how much you yeah. possess so forth mm -hmm. and so on. And in all actuality, that is not the true measurement of success. Mm -hmm. um, I shared again, concerning the story out of Miles Moreau book in pursuit of purpose, where the gentleman once again was the well-known businessman in his community. And here a young man was walking on, on the uh, beach and he saw this man out there drowning and he was, he was really trying to drown himself. And he went out there to rescue him and he brought him back and he asked him, why would you do that? And he realized who the man was. You're the most prominent businessman in our community and so forth. Why would you try to kill yourself? And he said, you don't understand. I never wanted to be a, a businessman. All I wanted to do was be a guitar player in a band. Mm -hmm. And so this is where when I counsel a lot of people, I, I want them to eliminate <clears throat> the idea that the world has projected concerning what is the true measurement of success. I, I try to help them discover again, what are you passionate about? What is it that you love to do that you can wake up every morning and do it without even no thought and really enjoy it? Turn mm -hmm. that into a place where you can serve. Um, we, we had a statement, turn your passion into profit. But mm -hmm. I love what you're saying. Take your passion and serve, you know. Yeah. Yes. Which shows we are life force. And so mm -hmm. let's look for something that we can give life unto someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you remember uh, Russell Simmons? You've heard of him, I'm sure. Yes. Russell Simmons. Yes. Uh, he wrote a book years ago called Do You. And the book was about uh, pretty much about the rap, the life of a rapper and mm -hmm. how how to find spirituality, how they found spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, but he, in, in essence, the book actually says that if you pursue music or anything else simply for the sake of having bling bling, cars, houses, mm -hmm. women, all of those things, the, the, the entrapments or the, the embellishments of the lifestyle, he said you will lose yourself because you what what you really enjoy is the music mm -hmm. doing the music so like you said pursuing what gives you joy and not getting caught up in all of the other stuff and that the book is really really good i gave it to my nephew at the time who was also in music uh so it it and russell simmons as you know is uh spiritual yeah, I'm Gary. I remember when they show used to come on um, TV. Mm -hmm. um, his brother, of course, is Run, mm -hmm. and um, he's the one that actually managed Run Run DMC. So mm -hmm. I'm from that era, y'all. So, mm -hmm. um, but they used to have a show, and I remember when his book yeah. came out and I, and how he was elaborating on that and so forth. Yep. Yes, yes. So it's pursuing what well, not so much pursuing, but doing what brings you joy. And then dad and I were talking about, and you might want to jump in on this one. We were talking about yesterday, how that the doer, or I should say the non-doer, there is, there is nothing here doing, but that, but things are being done. Mm -hmm. um, there is no me here that is doing. That is, there is no me here that's seeking. There is, there is simply those things being done. And they're being done by what is only here, and that is the essence of God. And so when, when we realize that there is nothing else here, uh, whatever I do, whatever is done, I should say like that, not I do, but whatever is done, is done by the essence of God. So this is where there is no real jumping and pursuing to try to find that niche uh, that I fit in to try to find that that spot that's going to bring me money or all of those things are important to this 
human existence, but they are not ultimately important. And so there, there is a need for the awakening experience to bring people to the non-doing. And like he said, that, that, that no longer motivates me. Exactly. So where does my motivation come from? Because one of the one of the traps, I should say, of of enlightenment is there comes this limpness of the will. The will goes limp, where you mm -hmm. no longer have the motivation <laughs> to do some of the things you used to do to get ahead, to fix your life. All of those things kind of just it's kind of reminds me of Jacob wrestling with the angel and his his thigh got struck and uh -huh. he no longer could walk. He was limping. It's like your will go, goes limp and you really don't have any strength to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps anymore. I don't know I, if that I, makes sense, but that's I, I, I have to write it down because I love the way you say when your will goes limp. It does. It goes limp. And then you wonder, what do I do now? What do I do? And if I think of something to do that might at the moment feel like it'll give me some motivation, it doesn't last. So the whatever the power was to get me through some of the other things, it's no longer active. And, and the reason why I had, I had to um, write that down, because I, I believe I went through that experience um, again, um, things that used to excite me or um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I felt like I had, had to do whatever so forth yeah. so on. Yeah. It's, it's not there no more and so yeah. by your explanation it it brings a a peace of mind and the reason why I say that because when when we're not in that awakened or enlightened state and that happens to us mm -hmm. then we begin to we begin to uh feel like and it's not true it's a delusion like something is wrong with us we panic Yep, exactly. The panic. Exactly. What's, going on? What, what's going on with me? What and you start feeling uh, like a failure, you start feeling worthless, and so mm -hmm. forth. And it's all because mm -hmm. again, yeah. is this is this this shift in you that those things that kind of like motivate you, inspire you. I love how you said it went limp. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I'm guilty of that because when I feel like I'm not doing something. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm I'm not progressing. I'm not being productive, and so I be I start being hard on myself. I yeah, especially myself. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're performance oriented, and I was being mm -hmm. the oldest child in the house. I had to always perform. I had to I had to be on my p's and q's, and I had to make sure everybody was okay. <coughs> Excuse me, but then when that that wheel goes limp you no longer have the determination to push through whatever feelings uh, of lethargy that you have. Um, you, you tend to, like you said, you feel unproductive. You feel, in a case of Christians, they feel like they're backsliding. Uh, so there's a lot of things around that. And I wanted to just give God. some... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Man of the Universe says he's never wanted to work to the, be the center wanted work to be the center of his life and he enjoys the other things in life. That's a good thing. That's a good philosophy to have. But it, everybody doesn't get to that until they've had a glimpse. And then uh, Linda says, feeling a need for purpose can cause suffering. Yes, yes, Definitely. yes. And then she says, I've been, I've been waiting years to just be home, to just be each moment in each moment. This and the dogs are my retirement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then when you get there, it's like, mm, is this enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you because we we've been there, haven't we, honey? Especially mm -hmm. since we closed the building and everything. Uh, Man of the Universe says, "I know the meaning of awakening, but I don't feel that I need to do nothing. I just don't base myself worth on a house of cards." That's good. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> you will. See the doing, none doing self from the perspective of the four faces of the beast in Ezekiel.
the beast could see four directions at once mm -hmm. and never move. Never turn. Or never turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember taking three steps and never moved a leg, never took a step from when I walked up the swirling stairs around that pole and come out through the clouds. I had no I had no indications of asking for anything. I remember the blankness that I left behind was silent. And then all of a sudden, the question that I was made out of asked itself. And when it asked itself, it said to itself, how far is it from where my feet and legs and anatomy is standing to the end of this road? The question was asked of the me, not the me. It was the me that was that was the me that left the me that was conditioned and was made out of personality, thoughts, feelings, expressions, wars, right and wrong, agreements, disagreement, growing up, having and not having, thinking of going somewhere and can't get there, how will I have enough money for school when it is time to go to bed? When will I get my new clothes to start school? And what grade will I be in? All of those are part of the no existing self. In the no existing self, which was left behind, I walked and never took a step of a thousand miles. I realized that they asked the question, how many miles, how far was it from where I was standing, is the, the notion of two, where, why, and how long. Any questions that would be asked of one to the other is an indication of an opposite. If there is someone to ask and someone to answer in order for it to be within the bounds of, of the legalities of the divine essence, it would have to be the same one that asked the question. The same one must become the answer and the answer back to its originality in order for there'd be no separation. When I got down to the end, I never moved, but I do know that I saw the water cross the, the surface of the place I was in and everything was solid. Again, if there is something spirit, it doesn't always mean that it is not solid, but it means that it does not give sway to the possessiveness of something or the obsessiveness of something being so solid that it causes your attention to say yes to it. Once it is finally settled that whatever solid is not telling the truth because it does not have to exist in the, in the spirit realm to be real. When I saw this, I understood what it meant when he said to me that morning he said I said you knew I was going to see this I said you knew I was going to find this out he said I allowed you to do it but I didn't know he was talking to himself he said to himself have I not been me sleeping in the bed with you he was talking about her but I didn't know who her was. I didn't, I thought her was her that was born of Anthony Mitchell and Celestine Mitchell, and that her was my wife. 
But when he said that, it took 50 years to this point to find out that who was her was not him, but who was her that was him that was speaking to himself. God never, ever prays to anybody else but himself, and that does not make him narcissistic. That makes him to know that there is no narcissism until we create it by saying we are a real person apart from him, apart from that. I'm talking in riddles. I'm talking in rhymes. I'm talking in uh, one, twos, and threes. Because Jesus said this, in that day ye shall ask me nothing. In other words, in that day you shall not ask Jesus anything. But he said, you must realize the transcendent asking function is, verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father, whatsoever you shall ask, whatsoever the Christ will ask himself in the form of the Father, that will be fulfilled. How is it fulfilled? It is not fulfilled by getting something. It's not fulfilled by obtaining. It's not fulfilled by struggling. It's not fulfilled by grasping. It's not fulfilled by determination. It's not fulfilled by fasting. It's not fulfilled by study. It's not fulfilled by somebody praying for you. It's not fulfilled by going to services. It's not fulfilled by going to another church. It's not fulfilled by going down the road to another man who you thought that was something beyond what anybody else was. It's not that part of you that has been fulfilled that searches for years and find an anointing. All of these things will cease to exist and there will be nobody left but Christ. Matter of fact, this conversation does not exist. <laughs> uh, my mouth is running and, and that don't even exist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I saw it. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me give a couple of comments if you don't mind, Pastor. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, unless I'm you got ahead. something pressing no, no. you wanted to say. Uh, Man of the Universe says there's a book called Choose Again, mm. in which the author worked with people who were highly successful but unhappy. They learned that their motivation to be successful was motivated by feelings of not being good enough and the need to prove their worthiness to themselves and others. Mm -hmm. Now, that's good. That's good. Yes. And, and I'm glad he brought that up because remember, I shared with you guys in the process of, of ministry and, and when the pandemic happened again, I mean, what happened, I discovered that I was doing a lot of things from a place of confinement or being in prison because mm -hmm. I was constantly trying to fulfill the expectations, yeah. the perceptions of other people, what it means to be a good person. Um, preacher or minister or pastor and mm -hmm. so forth and it was imprisoning me yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and in, in the case of my husband here i'm sure he would say it out and gentlemen say it for him he said that when shutting the building down he had gotten so much of his self-worth from having that building and having that following uh appearance of a lot of people following and validating what was being done. Uh, the loss of that was was hard, was a grievous thing, has been a grievous thing. But, but, but let me read this because this is going to help all of us, I do believe. He says here, he said, the drive for meaning and purpose dissolves because we are coming from a different perspective a perspective where such things don't really exist, certainly not in the old way. They no longer exist from an egoic standpoint. When we wake up, we see the dream state for what it is. How could a dream state have meaning? How could a dream state have purpose? It's just a dream, right? That's true, but I've said it over and over. After awakening, there is still a human being with a human mind that is trying to make sense of things. The mind is even trying to make sense of the awakening itself. Mm -hmm. Since for most people, there's not a total disappearance of the ego, the mind continues to try to understand the insights of awakening. 
the mind will start to say, oh God, I no longer have any purpose or meaning. You have seen too much of reality to believe in egoic purpose or meaning any longer. Yet there is still enough ego structure left to be invested in meaning and purpose. The illusion of ego is noticing that there is no meaning. It is peering into the truth, which can be very disorienting. It's at this point that some people get trapped in this thing called meaninglessness. Life seems to have no meaning. In the most negative sense, life has no purpose. It's as if the ego were a big balloon. Now all its air has been let out. Through your perception of reality, the balloon has been deflated and all that's left in this limp piece of rubber <laughs> and all that's left is this limp piece of rubber, but the balloon is still there and it's asking what happened? What happened to the air? What happened to the meaning in my life? What happened to my purpose? With the remains of the egoic structure still in place, it sometimes easy to get caught in a negative sense of meaningless, meaninglessness and purposeless, purposelessness. From an awakened point of view, to say there's no meaning and no purpose is tremendously positive. And it is positive because one has found something better than meaning or purpose. One is actually awakened as the very essence of existence itself. What more what could have more meaning than that? What could have more purpose than that? From the point of point view of the ego, this can be devastating. If you're not careful, you will get caught in a whirlwind or tide pool of ego that will whirl you into a depressive state. I've met people over the years who have had a very real seeing, but their ego has reacted to what they saw. Oh, that's good. Ego literally reacts to the reality that was perceived. And the reaction can be very negative. The ego may get depressed. Meaning and purpose has dissolved out of its structure. And there's still enough ego there to sit around and feel bad about it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Some people can spend quite a period of time stuck in this depressive state. One of the antidotes to being stuck in meaninglessness is to see that we are only looking at truth from the ego's point of view. Ooh. Wow. Man. That was powerful. powerful. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. When, when you made that statement, uh, right, because the, the, the thought that was coming to me as you were reading that, the same recurrent thought kept coming up. The suffering, of, the suffering of trying to figure yourself own self out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> Why mm -hmm. did this happen? Yes, <laughs> and we yeah. and, and it, he explains it so well, and that's one of the reasons I really like uh, Adi Ashanti for that reason. He he explains what you're going through, and not very many teachers do that. Wow, not many do that. So if there is a meditation. If there is a prayer, if there is a desire to receive something from God, if there is a desire to walk closer to God, if there's a desire to want to find out more about God, that is a wolf ticket. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that wolf ticket, God himself is the wolf ticket playing a game with himself until he finds out that the wolf ticket is dead. It doesn't produce anything. This is what he meant when he said, at that day ye shall ask in my name and I, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father. He didn't say pray to. He said, I will pray the mystical side. I will tell myself for you. I will tell myself for the part of you that don't know how to tell it own God self. 
what I have to tell in order for you to see that you don't need anything but waking up. Okay. Hmm. For the father himself, talking to himself, love of you because ye have loved me. The love that you will find out will be this. One of these days, I don't know what day it is, maybe in the no day, the zero day. One of these days you will say, and it won't, and listen, listen to this, listen to this. <laughs> It'll come up and 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 your divided self will say, where'd this come from? Mm -hmm. Who said that? And I like what you said, your divided self. Your divided a notion, <laughs> the divided lie, <laughs> the divided scam, scheme. <laughs> that the mm. uh, excuse me for saying this, the divided bitch will say. I mean, I say it like that for God. That is the only thing that's keeping awareness stuck in being two, three, fours, and five. Here we go. You will come to the place of seeing complete stillness. There, the best sermon you could preach in any ego pulpit is nothing. The most powerful word that you could speak across the pulpit is nothing. But then that destroys what you uh -oh. have. Uh oh. That uh -oh. destroys the preacher. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Exactly. Uh -oh. Exactly. Uh -oh. Exactly. Oh, Lord. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I said we preached ourselves out of a job. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. We mm -hmm. did. Actually, I love, we did. I love the way you said that. We, yep. we I preached see ourselves it. out I, of a job. By, by causing people to see that the answer was inside of them and not in us. And, and, and it's funny oh, that because that, that goes oh, back God. to um, um, mm -hmm. what Carlton Pearson stated how. He have had conversations with um, a lot of pastors and preachers who who have experienced the place of enlightenment, mm -hmm. but if they if they would share it with their congregation, it would destroy it would affect, their careers. Exactly, it would affect their welfare, their mm -hmm. paycheck. They would lose everybody and so forth. So they popularity, would, all of that. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I like what Linda says, and for Man of the Universe, I, that was what that's what I'm reading. Uh, it was the End of Your World by Adi Ashanti, uh, and oh. Linda says, if you think there's a way to God, you will gain the way and miss God within. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, Linda. Yes. Oh, you're talking grown folks, girl. Yes, Linda. <laughs> And then she says, you only ain't talking like that ain't Linda. You just went to the father and we saw you no more. <laughs> right. And she, then she says, only looking at truth from the ego's point of view. And, and that's what Adi Ashanti is talking about in this book. When we've had that awakening experience, and then there's enough ego still here to feel bad about the fact that it's being dissolved and dismantled. That's that's where the feeling of meaninglessness and all of that, that sense of not being productive and all of this stuff that feels like I need to be doing something. And that's the ego saying, I need to be doing something. The, the marriage, <laughs> the marriage ceremony, the divorce, mm -mm -mm. all of it takes place in consciousness. Now watch this. Oh, I just had, oh, I just thought about something. You said that. You need to say it before you lose it. Dad, don't lose where you at. When he just mentioned that about marriage and then about the divorce, think about what, what people do when they're getting married. And, and I remember when I was getting, the first time I got married, dad tried to encourage us. Hey, I could y'all, we could just, I could marry y'all right here. Y'all don't need to be doing all that ceremonial stuff and spend all that money. So That's think about ego. that. When we do the weddings like that, that is feeding ego. Mm -hmm. And then you do all of that and a few years later, y'all divorce. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And now listen, you can't do it like you said because the ego is the one that brought the subject up about doing it like that. Mm-hmm. 
and the ego is too much real, like it's must be that. And then ego says, it is now finalized. That's the biggest rip off, sassy, ugly, nasty, stinking, low down, dirty dingus McGee I ever heard of. In related. <laughs> <laughs> but I like what Audio Shanti here yeah. says. Shoot it, kill it. Audio Shanti says there's still enough ego there uh, to sit uh, around uh, and feel bad about. It. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, baby. Thank okay, you. listen. Thank so he says there is nothing in awakening for the ego. That is that we've discovered that there it will not satisfy an ego. This awakening message, this this truth will not satisfy an ego. And then he says, awakening wakes up from the ego. So from the ego's point of view, awakening has no benefit. Awakening benefits only being. It's benefits, mm -hmm. it I'm benefits talking. what talking. you really are, mm -hmm. but it does not bring benefit to the ego. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's nothing more devastating than looking at truth from the standpoint of ego. One may think it would be wonderful if the ego could see the truth, that the ego would be overwhelmed with joy and happiness, but that is not the case. What is changed, what is changed at new birth and enlightenment is enough to aggravate the hell out of the ego <laughs> to make it feel like it needs some more. And the only thing it need is to get out the way. Well, and, and it feels like it needs more because it's looking for something to get relief. Thank you. From... It's suffering. Yeah, go ahead. And, and I just, and when you said, when you read that just now, something dawned on me and I heard about the universal ego. Uh oh. And, and because of all these things that is occurring with the conflict between people, the racism, nations against <laughs> nations, that is ego doing that because it needs something to feed off of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That is why all these things are occurring. Mm -hmm. The confrontations, uh, the offense towards one another, the mm -hmm. me trying to be right over you and all of that. That's it. It is feeding that universe. That's, yes. That's the food. Yes, yes. That's the food that feeds yes. it. Yes. yes. Lord yeah, have yeah. mercy. Man of the universe says he was talking to someone with more traditional mm. views about God, and he didn't look at me like I was crazy. And that was refreshing. Mm. And you know what that means? That means that that person is now beginning to see through the illusion. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were not thinking you were crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because some of us have, have, have got the veil that that uh, that has hidden reality from us has now gotten very, very thin. I told my cousin last night on the phone about how many times I have seen Jesus in person. But I reminded him there's a passion of Christ that brings mm -hmm. disturbance in the hall of the tabernacle of the water, the water vase or the bowl. That water in the tabernacle and the mirrors in there should not have any other reflection at all. It should be when the priest stand in front of it, there should not be a reflection, be a reflection of Moses. It shouldn't be a reflection. It should all. not be any rippling waves in the water in the bowl. Now I have God to I have to say now, I don't know how much Linda knows and how much man of the universe knows and whoever is listening to us knows about the tabernacle. We're talking referring to the tabernacle in the mm -hmm. wilderness mm -hmm. where they built the oh, Israelites nice. built this mm -hmm. this tabernacle. It had three different Ooh, uh, sections mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. and it was where God would come down in the most holy place mm -hmm. and rest on the ark. And before they got to the most holy place, there was a seg segment that was called 
the holy place that yeah. had mirrors and yeah. mm -hmm. candles and all Images. kinds of uh, mm -hmm. reflecting things mm -hmm. and that the priest had to go through that Oh, I call it Hall of Mirrors. Yeah. And what you're saying is there should not have been a reflection. That's right. There could not be a reflection to get into the most holy place. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Now you go through the veil. There's no opening in it. That's right. There's no opening. But it you is, are the door. It is thinning. It that is goes thinning. through it. Yes. If you walk to the wall and you want to go through it, that's what I got stuck in the wall. I did. I got up out of my body and went inside the wall. And as I got inside the wall, I stopped being my real self. I entered, My ego interfered and I got stuck between the wall and here. And I was hanging on both sides. Wow. Then you, all of a sudden. You're just strange like that. Oh, <laughs> <God. Yeah. laughs> well, if you hadn't been there in the bed, I never would have come back. So I saw you and I come back. I had to go, I had to come back, hey, I had to come back to my pie. Again, you just described, um, and, and of course, you, you study a lot of uh, 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 after death experiences where people have been caught in that place of uh -huh. making a decision yeah. to go uh -huh. on yeah. or to return back to their loved ones. Yeah, now listen, this is in Hebrews 10 and 19. He says, Having Therefore, oh, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. watch this. I'm going to lay down my burden <laughs> down by the river, down, down by, by the, the river. Side. I'm down gonna lay by the riverside. I'm gonna lay down my burden down by the riverside. To study one more. Yeah. Okay, now now, okay, now I'm going to encourage y'all. Okay, I, I next year in 2024. Huh? I want to be I said it next year, 2024. I want to be y'all CD. <laughs> <laughs> I look at my dog in the face and I tell God that I see him. And when I, every time you see God, you're going to see you. The next step you're going to take or the next steak you're going to eat will be God eating it and tasting it <laughs> in his mouth. There is no Sawyer. There is no, no cornerstone. There is no... Linda and Bob and Buck and Bill and uh, Josh Randall and Clark Kent and Superman and Batman <laughs> and Daffy Duck. You're talking my type of language now. <laughs> the last pig that was poked but put on the grill and baked. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey, but I, I got a question, and 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 uh, <laughs> he's now mixing mixing his comedy with his mysticism. Exactly. So, you know. Um, but but I have a question, and and this is something that we've heard so so much in um, Christendom in in the church that um we make the statement that we shall see Jesus in one another, right? Ooh. Okay. So I, I, I want to throw this out here. What what occurs and what is happening, and just for the sake of, of the, those that's watching us, when we look at one another and we don't see Christ that's in okay. one another, mm -hmm. what is what is happening at that time? What what's the result? What is the um yeah, I'll say consequence of that. What okay. what are we seeing, or what is the... when we can look at one another, and we are unable to recognize okay. Christ in one another? Okay. He went back beyond the veil to hide again inside, mm -hmm. to work, to will, and to do mm -hmm. of the good pleasure. The good pleasure is that mm -hmm. I want to come out. <laughs> and reveal myself when there is a little less conflict mm -hmm. 
when I get out there, resistance. a resistance. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that I'll go in and out of the tomb in a revolving door mm -hmm. until I find out that any disturbance out there has been accepted. Okay, okay, okay. He said, I go in and I come out in consciousness, awareness. Mm -hmm. When it is settled that you, the you that wants to change the outside, mm -hmm. no longer mm -hmm. is trying to change itself. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's showing you Nothing has changed in your real self, but the change that takes place in with the presence of the true self, let it change the unchanging instead of the ego trying to change it and make it look like God did it. It's good. It's good. Okay. Now, you, you, you're coming home. Do you remember the scripture that says the kingdom of God comes not with observation? Mm -hmm. The going in and out oh, experience Lord. that he just mentioned that he was talking about, I actually had that experience. Mm -hmm. And I think I've shared it before. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I, I was standing in the mirror, oh, this is the second Lord. time this happened to me, standing, <laughs> looking in the mirror, and my face transfigures, and I hear the voice say to me, I'm going to go back in and oh, work Lord. so that when I come out, you will not be afraid. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it felt like some being came forward and that that I am, Antoinette, went behind it. Mm -hmm. And Antoinette's trying to stay out in the forefront. But that being, which is Christ, came forward and it said to me, I'm going to work until there is no longer any resistance in you. There's no longer uh, any fear in you. And I'm so that I can stay out. This is how it was said to me. So when it says uh, the kingdom of God comes not with observation, when Christ stays out, when that inner work has been done where there is no more fear, no more resistance, there will be no two consciousnesses. There won't be the consciousness of being Antoinette and the consciousness of being that Christ. Mm -hmm. There will be the merging of that, not, not so much the disappearance of this, but the merging of it to the point that I am disappeared or consumed by that Christ. Mm -hmm. And so what now, and Paul said it, it is not I that live, but Christ. Christ. So it's like an exchange has taken place. When it takes place, Antoinette doesn't exist except as Christ. Exactly. But Christ exists as Antoinette. So it's like there's no, Antoinette there's no separation. In, because Antoinette is seated in, heav in the heavenly places. Yeah, but not as a separate other. Exactly. That's the thing. See, we, 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 the, the belief in separation makes me an other. And, I, and I'm not ever going to be an other again. So it's like to be one, there has to no be, not be any two. There can't be two. Okay. One means not two. So mm -hmm. when you said that, once that's taken place where that inner work has been done by God, mm -hmm. not by me, mm -hmm. there is a, it's like a, uh, 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 it's not a fragmentation anymore. It's an integration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what salvation really is. It's being made whole. It's, it's no longer an, a divisive other. It's an integration of everything that Norman is, everything that Linda is, everything that Clifton is, everything that man of the universe is. It's an integration of that into that Christ being, that Christ being now has the preeminence and, the, and it doesn't have any, there's no evidence of it being, of it taking place. That's the thing. That class of deliverance that's supposed to take place, you mentioned it. That you got to do tonight, that he has yeah. to do tonight. Let me tell you something mystical behind that. 
Sin, C N. Cast is out every bit of the need of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't see it, you'll be talking about how to keep something that don't even exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, That's now, it. That's now, it. now, listen to this. I sat under a mentor that stayed mad and aggravated all the time. He's supposed to have been mad at the devil, but he used people as devils. <laughs> you couldn't say good morning to oh, him. He would Lord. say, what you mean? What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? What you he mean? He was just off the And I went back in the back of his curtain and the pool pit. He was so mad. He passed gas back there and stunk the place up. And I had to stop breathing. <laughs> I wanted to get back in my other than my real self and cuss him out and tell him how he stink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he could he could have been going through his he could have been going through his process of deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> you, you needed deliverance when he came out. You ain't you lying. I think my nose turned red and blew his Rudolph nose. Lord, Lord, Lord. Well, anyway, he was he was he was terrible. You couldn't say that to him. And he was supposed to have been on a vacation. You know what he spent his vacation up oh, in the balcony. Yeah, he, he he said he was going off for vacation for a week. And when we looked up, he's up in the balcony yeah. hiding out, watching to see what everybody yeah. doing. That fart must have sat up there and watched everything, then come back down there just like he had never left. But but now that's funny because um I know for uh uh, uh just years ago. That the way they had to build the, the church here, I was a guest speaker, and I know and I wonder what they're talking about, right? Here, you know, you have your normal pulpit or whatever, where, where you stand and speak from or whatever. Do you have a congregation? So they was it, talking about the man of God, that you know, the the apostle of the house and so forth and so on. I wonder where he is yeah. he saying all this stuff. Only for me to look up behind me like this, he was seated. <laughs> In a spot. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh my goodness. The things we do. The things we do as ego beings. I said I never seen that like that in my life. <laughs> okay. But well, look, we we we've been over know, an hour. I know, but let me I tell know you. you're just now getting heated up. Let me up. tell you something. <laughs> I want I'll tell you. <laughs> I I'm going my ego was wiped out. The building, the people, mm -hmm. the friends, the, this travailing that you see is is it? Is the ego having a funeral? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my ego having a funeral of the loss of everything. Uh, I never, my ego never. I well, at first it was okay. I was pastoring and I had the building and the church, and I'd done something that. Uh, Miraculously, because I had the vision of seeing Jesus, but I didn't know I was seeing my real self, and that eventually the desire to want to be him would fulfill itself. The cars were taken away, the bankruptcy was there, the bank received the, the place back, the chairs had to be sold, all the instruments had to be uh, relinquished. We moved three times and we had to lose that. I mean, the pain of dying and the ego. And then I finally realized, and, and, and I tell you, out of all of this, it makes you afraid when you hear somebody at 70 and 60, they just kick the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you hear you are 67 and ain't no telling, well, <laughs> excuse me, well, hell, you might have a bucket <laughs> sitting outside your door ready to be kicked. <laughs> we, we're standing on a banana peel. <laughs> <laughs> you like to fall down and pass gas and die. We're you know? at that age. We're, we're at that age like a hookah when it's just about ready, about time to replace everything. And, and then if you don't replace it, it's going to kick the bucket. So that's where hey, we are. My car done turned from being an automobile to a, a hoopty. <laughs> oh, my God.
God. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm crying all night and I can't sleep. <laughs> I can't eat. And every time I eat, it gives me indigestion. And the eye you're talking about, we know who and, it is. And, yeah, you know, and, and you you you, <laughs> you you come to the place where you're living off of social security. And look at this. This thing dying so this thing is dying so real. <laughs> it's dying so real <laughs> that you ask people to give offerings. And mm -hmm. bless you with what little bit sanity of being Christ is in this little bitty moment online, and they give you the little bitty. They give they give just enough to to, to keep the little bitty revelation of being Christ going. And let me tell you, that, and suicide <laughs> comes up in this thing too. The the ego say, I think I just go ahead on and run down the bridge, run into a post, take a hatchet and knock the hell out myself. That ain't going to do it. And to, and to be just your luck to be like the man who jumped off of the bridge yeah, down, down the on the interstate, interstate and everybody 52. dodged him. And every car <laughs> missed him. The woman, the woman was did. mad at her husband. All pastor. they did was one, hurt himself. woman was mad at her husband and going to kill herself. Jumped out the window and Oh, go when it wasn't high enough. And she broke Sam. both legs. And she just, just broke both <laughs> and, and, and it, Now, that's, that's, I never saw that before. Um, that that commit, committing suicide, that's ego involved as well. That's, ego. Yeah. that's the ego. That's the ego trying to escape the suffering. The ego ain't got enough sense to kill itself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've Bro. been on here long enough. It's but been a great but conversation. But a perfect example of what y'all talked about tonight. When you talked about Jesus so blessed, <laughs> he blessed. He blessed, he broke, he broke it, and, and then he gave it. it. Yes. Oh, God. That's, that's the process. You're killing me, man. Yeah. Don't say no more. He, and there was one where he says he took it. There, that, there was one, one verse where it says he took it. He blessed it, he broke it, and then he gave it. So he takes us and blesses us. We feel the blessing of it. And then we go through the breaking process. And then we are given. A, to, a to pastor, the as a woman that was in church and, and the preacher was preaching, and every time he preached, he duck down behind the roster. <laughs> when you go down behind the roster, you had a fearful liquor back there. <laughs> Yeah, he go down. He said, he go down back there. Now, now, you, now you see me. Now you don't. And now he, you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he go down there. Now you see me come up. He got back down in that hole one time. Come back. Like, now you see me. I don't give a damn who to. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the life of the rich and famous. Yes. <laughs> the, the awakened ones who are now experiencing <laughs> the dismantling and the death of their egos. And there's still just a little bit of ego there enough to feel the suffering and the pain. <laughs> and so uh, we're we're just uh, glad that we have a chance to, to have you this know, conversation. I'm you know we're serious, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But we've got to let these people go. We've been here for over an hour. It's been that long. Oh, yeah. It's been 11 yeah. minutes after. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. But it was good, Pastor Norman, talking to you yes, today. Yes, yes. And, and you do good tonight with your... Uh, was yeah. it a podcast or what are you doing? It's actually, I think they're gonna be doing it um a virtual with Zoom. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I wish I could come down there. I wish I could be in that and, and, and cut up with them a little bit. Well, I mean, actually, I, it's gonna be on on screen. I'm gonna be at home, like I yeah. said. I'll just oh, be oh, like, oh, what okay. doing now. It's gonna mm -hmm. be uh the same thing. Oh like okay. yeah, okay. Well, it's gonna be good, and I know it will. Linda, we love you. Man of the Universe, Amanda, we love you. you. Anybody Amanda else that's watching? Hey, hey, please, you, all you little egos out there that understand how we little egos over here need some little money. How about pitching in a good chunk of money for these little egos to keep acting silly until they finally die? <laughs> okay, so if they want to do that, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give them their means of doing that. Yeah, so please. thank you guys. We love you. We'll see you again next. Thursday at 12.30 for and Improv then Sunday morning. Two. Sunday morning. And we'll be back, of course, on Sunday morning at 10. Right. Pastor Norman will be back at 11, right, Pastor Norman? Yep. We yeah. love you guys. We'll see you next week. Hey, hey, Pastor. Have a great day. Pastor, 
I had a cousin. Now you just started. Wait, wait, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna let you we go. We set up the bars, and you said you started another conversation. I had a cousin went to jail and had no underwear on. I leave it with that. <laughs> you can't leave it at that. See, see yeah, you yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> Let it <be> my imagination. <laughs> Bye, guys. See y'all. Yeah. <laughs>